welcome. It's Leith again. And today I'm going to talk to you about perception online. Just a very short piece. We're all doing this in the virtual world. And, I, you know, I see different behaviors online with different people doing different things, especially while they're seated, as most of us are doing some kind of Zoom call, Google Hangouts, Microsoft Teams, you know, any of the other platforms that we communicate on virtually, there are a number of things that we could look at in terms of how our perception in, on online or in the virtual world is more effective. So let's get straight into it. I'll share my perception in the real world and sorry, in the virtual world even. Here we go. Some of you will have already seen this. This is something that I refer to quite regularly. It's Albert Moravian, who's uh, originally from Iran and an engineer who emigrated eventually to the USA based out of uh, University of California in Los Angeles. Uh, he is much more well known for his communication research and, and uh, studies. And 55% of how you look and 38% of how you sound and 7% of what you actually say accounts for the impact of your communication. Now, as I've said on an earlier video, that doesn't necessarily mean that 7% is unimportant or only has 7% of, of the importance towards your impact. All three elements, the red, the blue, the yellow, have to be there in order for high impact communication to take place. But we're not gonna dwell on that today because I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna consider how we look online but I thought I'd use this as a backdrop because we are going to consider how you look in terms of the red and beware of your mismatched messages as I've said on a previous video but again as a, a backdrop to what I'm about to talk about beware that if you are excited and that you're really tuned in to what you're saying that you don't say it like this I'm very excited to be here and I'm looking forward to talking to you because I am uh, an expert in communication and I'm very excited about being here. No, that doesn't work. That is a perfect example of how your body language is leaking that you really don't want to be there and you're really not excited even though the words say the words that you said were saying that was the case. So very quickly in terms of when you're standing uh, up you know, in face to face in a live situation or virtually, these are some of the behaviors that we see many, many, many people exhibit hands in pockets, <clears throat> twitching with the fingers. Number three, the Velcro, which basically means something that's really sticky and difficult to separate. Uh, the dance when people are trotting around on the spot because they've got all that extra energy and the tilt where people typically lean on one hip and then the other and so on and so forth. Don't want to focus on that too much today since most of us in the virtual world will be seated uh, somewhere near a laptop or a mobile or device or a tablet. So I'm going to focus more on that today. We may have, we may come back to this at another time. So the 55% in red that I wanted to focus on today, we're talking about the seated virtual presentations, as I mentioned earlier. So this is one of the behaviors I see quite a lot. And I don't know about you, it can be quite distracting, uh, uncomfortable to watch sometimes, and even possibly irritating or annoying at the, at the extreme end of the scale. So this is somebody that's rocking. In other words, they've got a chair similar to this one where they're rocking, maybe gesturing at something, but they're rocking back and forth. And for me, that's quite distracting. Their voice and the inflection in their voice may change because of the way that they're, they're seated and how they're moving back and forth, possibly further and closer to a microphone as they do it. Being looking tired. So, you know, if, you, <clears throat> if you're doing something like this or that, you know, yes, it's not the end of the world, but it does look like you may be a little bit tired and maybe even your head is gonna drop off because you're that tired. There's a couple of things there. Obviously, if you're on a very long uh, virtual call or some kind of um, call online and it's taken a long time, another tip there, separate tip would be to break up the call. So it's in more manageable bite-sized chunks rather than a sort of a three or four hour marathon with no breaks because inevitably you're going to get this behavior from some people. Number three, bored. Uh, you know, again, I've witnessed this in the last four or five weeks, you know, when I've been on a call and there's people on the screen 
and it has gone on for a couple of hours. I have seen a number of people who are looking quite bored and not necessarily engaged and possibly even going to fall asleep. And if they're not, they certainly look like they're bored and don't necessarily want to be there. So that's another behavior that we see. That person in number three is leaning back and his head's being supported. So again, just something to be aware of because at the end of the day, it's not only what you're doing, it's the perception you're giving your viewers. How do they perceive you when you're seated in that kind of manner? Number four, distracted. Now, that could be anything. It could be a, 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 a tablet that you've got in your hand. It could be a book. It may even be your laptop. Uh, I strongly suggest you don't put the laptop there, as you see in this image, otherwise people will be looking straight up your nostrils or at the double or triple chin because the camera angle is looking straight up your face. So being distracted, A, is not a great, uh, is, not a, is, is not a great look in terms of who's watching you. So your perception to them may seem that A, you're distracted, B, the look itself isn't going to be great because they may very well be looking up your nostrils and you're not aware of that. So again, uh, behavior to be avoided if you can possibly. Number five, a little bit better now, aren't we? So this person is sitting straight up in the chair. You know, they may be typing, not ideal because they may be typing, looking at the keyboard rather than the lens, but still better. They do look like they're being more attentive and even interacting with whatever's happening on screen whether it's a sales meeting, uh, you know, an up-to-date meeting, or simply a, a webinar and or a meeting that you're having online. Number five. Now, this is probably getting closer to what we, we need to be doing. So the previous one, if you remember, being attentive, this one looks like that person is listening. Hands apart, they're not clasped together, which makes it more rigid for you to speak and gesture. Looking quite relaxed, back straight and feet more or less on the floor and looking at you as the profile shows the silhouette shows that that person is looking directly at the camera and or the laptop rather than down or even side on so a good posture to to adopt if you can now i've included this one because i also see some people that i know from before have some kind of mask or some kind of facade that they put on when they're online. My, my suggestion is, and I would encourage you, just be yourself. Just be yourself like you would in any other situation. Be yourself. Don't put on a mask or a facade because you're online and you think you have to act or be different. Just be yourself. Because when all this is over in terms of the lockdown, we will be back to normal and we will be facing our colleagues and our friends and associates and vendors and suppliers face to face possibly and if you're different online now and then you meet them face to face in a few weeks or months time and you just feel a bit different because they were used to you acting in a certain way online it's going to be different it's going to be difficult for you to keep up that facade so just be yourself be whatever you are normally be yourself very much for listening. That was really just about the perception you have online and how important it is to at least uh, give the perception that you are being attentive, that you are present rather than being distracted with some other thing, whether it's an object or inanimate or otherwise, or a book and or a phone or anything that could be a distraction. All of those things give the perception that you're not paying attention to whatever the speaker is saying. Now, can we be focused and attentive 100% of the time? No, of course not. But I would suggest that if you're going to write notes or be distracted, minimize that time. So at least if the speaker is looking up and looking at you, to them, it feels like for the vast majority of the time that you are listening, you are tuned in and you are present. So thank you very much. My name is Leith from Impact Skills. Have a great day. Be safe. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Bye-bye.